these are perspectives from Nebraska, and after Sharon's talk this morning, I might say, or an analysis of a very unique legal framework which raises questions about where to draw the line between centralized government and decentralized government. This, by the way, is a picture of the Nebraska Platte River. The High Plains Aquifer covers most of Nebraska, as shown here in the light blue. And the thickest part of the High Plains Aquifer is under the Nebraska Sand Hills, shown here in yellow. This is over 19,000 square miles of grass-covered sand dunes underlain by sands and gravels that have enabled sufficient recharge to create up to 1,000 feet of saturated thickness. Precipitation, which varies such that it makes subhumid climate in the east and semi-arid climate of the west, is of course the major source of recharge. But also important in Nebraska is the importation of water from Colorado and Wyoming, particularly along the North Platte and South Platte rivers. And this importation, importation of uh, surface water um, has allowed us to uh, have a surprisingly uh, small decrease in water table declines. Important to Nebraska is the fact that our major discharge is from irrigated agriculture. In fact, Nebraska has more irrigated acres than any other state in the U.S. and in more than most countries. And over 83% of Nebraska's land is irrigated with groundwater wells, um, and then we have 99,000 um, irrigation wells registered in Nebraska for um, groundwater. The drawdowns um, in Nebraska are surprisingly small, uh, and we like to brag about this. According to the USGS, our weighted average annual drawdown is only about 0.3 feet. This low drawdown is in part because of the importation of surface water, which I just mentioned. As this graphic shows, however, we also have uh, are in the areas of blue, you'll see here, is where the importation of surface water, particularly from Wyoming, Colorado, have raised water tables as much as 100 feet. The areas of red show areas of significant drawdowns, however, particularly in Box Butte County and in the uh, western part of the Republican Basin, and these drawdowns are significant, in some cases over 100 feet. So how is... Nebraska faring for water, we have a very abundant supply of water. And in fact, the amount of water is not the real issue in Nebraska. The real question is whether or not the impacts of depleting a water supply will, um, what these impacts will be on other areas of the state, particularly as they affect water quality, ecosystems, economics, and regional equities and lifestyle. And I would argue that these impacts are critically important questions for the state of Nebraska to address. So how's Nebraska governing this water use? Since 19, or 1895, uh, with the um, shortage of surface water in the rest, Nebraska uh, has, adopt, has been applying a prior appropriation system, and Nebraska legislature gave the authority to regulate surface water to the state. However, the next major legislation impacting water management in Nebraska did not occur until 1972 when the legislature passed laws creating the natural resources districts. A major purpose of the NRDs was to prevent flood damages, so their boundaries were established along surface watershed boundaries. And they were also given a lot, wide range of other responsibilities, including the prevention of soil erosion, the creation of wildlife habitat and recreation areas and drainage. Notably, they were not given the authority to regulate groundwater. A major characteristic of the NRDs is that the legislature did not put them under the authority of the state, but established that they should be governed by a locally elected board of directors. However, with the large increase in irrigation wells in the dry 70s, Concerns about groundwater reservoir declines finally pushed the legislature in 1975 to pass laws regulating groundwater use. Fearing that groundwater users would all be junior to surface water users, the legislature chose not to regulate wells under a state-regulated prior appropriation system, but rather adopted a reasonable correlative rights system um, 
in which groundwater is shared in times of shortage, and they gave the authority over groundwater use not to the state, but to the newly formed and locally elected natural resources districts. Thus, Nebraska uh, established a split system with surface water regulated by the state under the prior appropriated white system and round groundwater regulated by the locally elected NRDs under a correlative right system. At this time, the laws and many Nebraskans still did not recognize that surface water and groundwater uh, were connected. It wasn't until the dry 1990s and early 2000s when surface water users and environmental groups started complaining and threatening to file lawsuits against groundwater pumpers that the legislature finally took action uh, to uh, try to integrate the regulation of surface water and groundwater. However, the legislature decided these issues were way too complex, both technically and legally, and perhaps more importantly, too politically controversial for them to try to deal with the le creating legislation themselves. Therefore, they gave the responsibility of developing a new law to a water policy task force, which had 49 members from all over the state, representing a wide range of water users. A key change the ta a key charge to the task force was to develop a law to reduce the conflicts between surface water and groundwater users. The legislature said you've got 18 months to do this. <laughs> uh, much to the surprise of many in the state, the task force in fact did develop a law using a consensus-based pro process, and this law was passed unchanged by the legislature in 2004. What the law did was maintain a split it maintained the split between surface water and groundwater, and it maintained the split in authority over regulation. But it did give the state authority to declare a basin fully appropriated. When a basin is determined by the state to be fully appropriated, the state and the affected NRD are required to jointly develop an integrated management plan that will achieve a balance between supplies and uses for both the near and long term and protect existing users from new depletions. This graphic shows in blue the areas that the state, uh, and I got to do this, uh, declared to be fully appropriated, and they have developed uh, integrated management plans with the uh, Department of Natural Resources. The other crosshatch areas and colored areas are areas where the NRDs are voluntarily working with the state to develop an integrated management plan. And since 2004, rates of depletion have slowed, partly because we've had near average uh, precipitation throughout the state, and partly because um, of the work of the NRDs. However, drawdowns have continued, as shown here in the reds and yellows. So and all of this raises the question of can we how can or whether can the NRD system, in fact, eliminate uh, long-term groundwater depletions and allow the chief state to achieve sustainability? This was the topic of research for Christina Hoffman and I, who um, looked at this question and, as a result, and published our findings in a uh, book, Nebraska's NRD Districts and Assessment, that was published by the Water for Food Institute. To do this assessment, we did not focus on the state of the groundwater itself, uh, partly because of the lagged impacts that we've already talked about for groundwater, but we turned instead to the work of Eleanor Ostrom, who in 1990 wrote a book called Governing the Commons, in which she described under what circumstances locally controlled governance structures can sustain uh, a commonly owned resource over long periods of time. Based on her work and that of many others who followed in her footsteps, we developed a list of 17 criteria. Uh, some of these criteria um, are determined in Nebraska by law, such as the recognition of the right to organize locally, river basin approach. Some are partly determined by law and implemented by the DNR and the NRDs, such as rules to prevent overharvesting congruence between the rules and local conditions, et cetera. And some uh, characteristics 
cannot be legislated, but the degree to excess success varies greatly depending on the people in the NRD and those that's trust and leadership. On the whole, as indicated by the check marks, uh, we determined that Nebraska's governance system met these criteria as well. We also looked at what researchers have told, um, have indicated they think will be important to adapt to climate change. These include uh, governance structures that transcend artificial boundaries, match governance system to issues and scales appropriately to the problem, facilitate multiple actors and provide adequate public participation to add legitimacy, increase understanding, and promote trust. These also adaptive management was, was extremely important. However, there were some problem areas. Equity, rapid assess, the need for a ra uh, rapid assess, access to conflict resolution processes and a nested empire. The Nebraska Supreme Court in a spear tease decision pointed to some of these concerns. They stated, although the integrated management law is a step toward reducing future conflicts through general regulation, ideally the legislature would develop a more comprehensive administrative appropriation system, uh, including procedures and remedies to adjudicate direct conflicts between groundwater and surface water users. They also implicated that we should have a nested hierarchy or a nested enterprise. According to Ostrom, this is where local institutions are part of a larger integrated network with different hierarchies and scales that collaborate with each other to manage the resource. This is particularly important with water resources. This map shows uh, with the lines, the NRD boundaries, and with the shaded areas, the river basin boundaries. And as you can see, in many cases, more than one NRD um, it regulates a watershed boundary. This becomes even more critical when you look at the regulation of the High Plains Aquifer. So it's very important to have some kind of a nested enterprise. The legislature understood this, and they said that the legislature intends and expects that each NRD uh, within which water use is causing external impacts will accept responsibility for groundwater management to the same manner and to the same extent as if the impacts were within the under another district. But this was intent language. It's not enforceable. Another concern about the nested hierarchy was stated by Eleanor Ostrom. She said, because local entities are under intense pressure from local entitlement holders, it is difficult for them to restrict water rights without support from higher level institutions. And I can tell you, many NRD managers over time have told me, and we like it when you come out and tell us we have to do something, because that means we can turn to our constituents and say, if we don't do it, she'll come and do it for us. <laughs> and also NRD managers told me in a more uh, formal uh, survey that the NRDs do not always agree, and there are times when the state should be the arbitrator between NRDs, and that there is a need for overall guidance from the state where impacts in extend beyond NRD boundaries. They also said that the state should provide a statewide perspective and set common targets, uh, which the NRDs should be allowed to try to achieve. However, if the NRDs do not meet the targets, the state should have the regulatory power to step in to ensure the targets and the interests of the state are met. Nevertheless, with these Notable exceptions, we believe that Nebraska's uh, local control-based uh, uh, governance system does allow us uh, to achieve our objectives and will help us with the, uh, as we face the uncertainties of climate change for these reasons. However, I do need to point out that good government depends on the will of the people themselves to communicate and collaborate with all stakeholders to work to develop trust and to provide the leadership necessary to ensure that the intent of the laws is in fact realized. Thank you.